Welcome to the Fun Sun 200 here at Myrtle Beach. Green flag, green uh, for green, green, the, green. Uh, obviously the today's uh, Grand National East Freeze, and then we will be going to the. I said it before by myself, but I completely forgot You're what, what it's Three called. Wide. We're at the fun sun tomorrow right now, and I gotta figure out how I pronounce this track's name before I even do it. So I'm gonna make sure I got it correct. Meridian. Uh, I don't believe it's the Meridian 200. Um, and that race. No, it's the Meridian 100, that's right. At Meridian Speedway. Surprised I could even spell it correctly. Clear. So as you see me, we're on lap 12 at this point. You see me struggling because I'm trying to figure out where is the best spot to pass everybody without wrecking myself trying too hard. So I started going to the top. Uh, I ripped it for a while and then I try to like make a diamond off move and it starts to work. It actually works pretty well during the race, but there's times where I get up in the wall and there's times where I come down to the bottom where I have to be on the bottom because I have to be able to clear someone before, or I'm able to clear someone before uh, going too wide again, or three wide if you count my car. So like there I got a little loose. Well, that, I'm, I'm actually surprised that the tire wear wasn't that bad compared to what it usually was. And a 60 lap race, probably because we never really did that many races here at Myrtle Beach that I had problems with, besides the 62 season where I had a relations race here. I think I was like two laps down, wrecked multiple times as well. And you see me get in the middle more. Instead of being on the top or the bottom, right in the middle. Sort of finding a line where it's right there on and I just hold it through the corner and then drive it off. Save some tires and also save my car. Because I'm not too far up where I might hit the wall and I'm not too far down where I might spin. I'm right in the middle of the balance and right in the middle of the racetrack. And then the 45 car is the next car in line, I would be in third, so we will have to catch up the later AR row, which we do eventually. And then we eventually take the lead. As you see me get through one, two, there with 26 to go. Clear inside. As you see, car we're up inside. to Bobby Allison Clear at this inside. point. And then there's a car that blows up, I believe that's the. AI. Clear. I don't remember what car that was. And then that causes, I believe, a caution. Oh no, this is the one that doesn't cause the caution, that's right. And then I get past uh, Bobby Allison, I believe, on this lap as well. Because I think I forced him to go three wide with the lap here. Here now I get cleared off the corner, and it looks like I just get cleared down the back stretch and go and turn three and clear. And then underneath the lap car. Then here we're down the back stretch. And we get caution for some reason, I don't know what it was at the moment at least. And I later find out that someone blew up and then someone ran into him. And I don't see it here. There's Daryl Waltrip blows up and then pulls up right in front of Bill Champion, and that's what caused that caution. Larry Arba almost clearing him out. Then we have a 10 lap shoot, actually a 12 lap shootout. Or 11 lap, actually. Green, green, green. And this is where I try too hard on the top, and then I kind of lose a little bit on the 74, and then eventually I, I goofed up and went back to second or third. Then I got back up, and got back up to first, because here I'm just trying to make sure my tires are going to be lasting to the end, especially for a long run, because my car really works with 10 to go instead of 3 to go, so. Just hoping that we don't get caution at this point. I believe it's no, I'm too low right here. I know it. I believe it was three and four on these laps. And I 
get too close to the wall and get some contact to it. Right there, I get really sideways, but I save it. Here is when I, after I hit the wall, and now I'm battling Benny Parsons and Bobby Allison once more, five to go. I get cleared of Parsons, and then we get cleared of Allison, I believe, down to turn three. And then we start going and racing back up to pretty much the win at this point, because to start gain from the 12 cars, the 74 car was actually pretty pretty fast, like I was able to pace myself behind him while also uh, making the gap between me and Allison bigger, we get loose there. Probably hit the wall more times than we have in laps. And then Akasha comes out, and that's pretty much where we just won the race with two to go here. Or coming to two to go, and I just let the 74 get his lap. I don't remember exactly what happened in the cause of caution. I believe it was a car that blew up. If not, then it was something else. And then here is me in, in the number 76 car, and we're gonna win another race. I believe that's five wins on the season. With Benny Parsons, I believe, having three. Or was it, uh... What a finish. I believe it was Benny me. Parsons with three. I'll see, we'll see that in the standings before we go to Metarian 100. Oh, it's actually four wins. Yeah, Benny Parsons does have three wins, and then Buddy Baker with one win. And then you see Allison, who's probably the most consistent guy there, up in second. And then... Jake Thomas in fifth, who's been actually pretty good this season as well, and Kale Yarbrough in sixth, and Dave Marcus in tenth. And now we're here at the Mandarin. <laughs> I s Mandarin in Mandarin 100. I'm Get messing it up because the more and more I speak, the more and more I forget green how to say it. Green, green, green. We got 52 laps here. For some reason, I couldn't get 50 straight laps for some reason. That's weird. But it doesn't matter because this race goes very quickly. And another dub happens in this race as well. It goes very quickly, and it's probably the shortest part of the video I expected to be, honestly. Even if we had the full race, it would be, I believe, the shortest part of the video because of how short this track is and how quick these laps are. So with 10 laps in, we're already up to 11. So we were gaining massive gains as um, Sky came there in the 45 in front of me as I keep it up, keep it tried the high it side. Keep high. Clear. Eventually it starts working a little bit at least, at least moving down just a little bit and then we're up to 5th, getting up to 3rd right there, getting past Jimmy and a little and then clearing him down the back stretch. Then you got Dick Bound. Inside. And there's the pass for the lead on Alonzo. As we battle him a little bit with 29 Clear. to go. Inside. In this West Next Coast race. And we lead that lap. 28 to go. And then we get to be underneath the 9 car. Clear Brad, Pratt, inside. I believe. And they got Ray Elder. Clear inside. New Orleans. Soros Jr. Get three Be wide, outside. luckily not wrecking. Able to get around, and you got Bob England as we open up about a six second gap on uh, second place of Alonzo. Stay low. Clear. That car to lap down. Now, at this point, I'm pretty much just driving as far as. I can without spinning my car out. Outside. Sometimes I drive too hard and I Stay spin out, out of nowhere Clear. and I don't expect it even though I should. Clear. Like right there, that could have been really bad. It took me a while to get by those guys and now I'm um, right behind Jim Cook in the 18 car who had a, a pretty vicious crash in 1970 in Riverside. If you haven't seen my arenaic or any f pictures of that. See me go a little too hard there, but I'm gonna get to run because I diamond off pretty well. 
tap the wall a little bit on the back stretch. Then we come up to the last lap. Oh, the low ass are in the 40 car right next to me. And then we're gonna pick up the dub as we come down the back stretch. We're gonna pick up the dub and that'll be it for the video. And we see you guys in races number 9 and 10 for the Grand National E Series as we take the checkers. Outside. You won!